Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Music Rating, Ranking, and Reviewing Podcast that we like to call Music Meltdown, where we rate, rank, and review an artist's discography, songs, whatever you really feel that we should do. This episode, we're going back to the 60s, my nemesis, as many know, but we're talking about a good band for once, uh, the Monkees. Uh, often known for being incredibly commercialized and not really being a band at the start of things. By, by the time of headquarters, though, those were squashed, but uh, a certain Mr. Hendricks had some comments to say about them that I heard about, yeah. so that was fun. That being said, though, prior experience with the Monkees, I knew, I knew a couple of these records. I knew up to, I want to say, head going into this. Everything else was sort of new, and then I've gone through the discography at least two or three times now in preparation, because this video has been in planning for a minute. I know we were first talking about doing this in, like, October, and that was, that was like, Tom was considering hopping on this, but uh, that, that didn't exactly pan out as well. We got Mr. Lada, per the usual, and um, got this sneaky boy, Mr. Aiden, here, joining us yeah, again yeah. for once. Hey, guys. What's up? I'm back. Hey. My triumphant return. Yes. Yeah, how about you get into what you know about the monkeys, my friend? Um, I watched every episode of the show. Uh I've heard all of these albums a ton of times, like maybe 30 each at least. Um, so yeah, I, I know these pretty well. You can pull it. He said even pull it. Pool it. Oh, oh God, no, no, not that one. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe once for that one, but no, the for the ones I actually like many, many times. Once might be one too many times for that record, but perhaps, yeah. We can get into that a bit later. Uh Rich, your experience with the monkeys. Yeah, I mean, I, I heard the monkeys when I was a little kid. Uh I watched uh reruns of the monkeys um tv show um don't remember too much about it but uh, you know a, a few certain songs were just burned in, into my brain daydream believer especially and uh really haven't heard them since um you know the occasional you know back in the 70s i would hear some monkeys hits on the radio i think but um haven't really uh haven't really heard them at all beyond that and i you know i knew i was intrigued because i i heard people say good things about them so you know i was glad to finally uh do a deep dive yeah yeah nice. i think they're they're a band where it's like they have a lot of I don't know. They they do have a lot of fans. Like I'm in a few monkeys Discord servers, and I'll make sure to share this video with them. Don't worry. Nice. Uh, I'm surprised the monkeys fans uh, know what Discord is. Typically, <laughs> <laughs> uh, with that being said, how how do we want to go about this? Do we want to do like 13, 12, 11 in the top ten, or do you just want to go one at a time for each of them? I I don't have a ton to say about the bottom three. Neither do I, so let's just run through those all at once. I'll go ahead and uh, kick this off for us, and uh, I'm not going to be real nice at the bottom. 13, pull it. Uh, to me, this record is just really dreadful on all levels. Uh, I think that the production across it, it's just an utterly dated mess. Uh, the synths are one thing, but the drum sound is even worse. And with an absolutely ridiculous amount of reverb across all these songs, it's just really terrible and the songs themselves aren't even good with especially the low way of the record being she's moving in with rico none of the performances are very good i, I kind of like the peter torque song since you went away near the tail end but one mediocre song doesn't add up to a record of garbage uh one star pretty dreadful in my opinion i'm uh, moving up from there at number 12 i have just us a painfully mediocre album not really a ton to say about it. The production still sucks. Uh, they're trying really hard to be like a 90s band or it's just trying really hard to be really safe, really plain. There's a couple of good tracks, but for the most part, it's just really mediocre. I have it at two and a half. 
And then from there, I had the obligatory Christmas album, Christmas Party. Wasn't even going to include it, but you guys kind of strong on me to do it. Um, it's not a terrible record. Just massive step up from the bottom of the, from the bottom two of my list. Uh, my main issue is that on this and Good Times, you can really feel a bunch of pitch shifting and vocal correction across the records. It, it doesn't kill them, but it's really noticeable, I would say, especially on the Peter Torque number, uh, Angels We Have Heard on High. And that song is really bad. But there is some genuinely really solid Christmas songs. I think the opener is really good. Uh, Nesmith's song, the Christmas song is excellent, as well as House of Broken Gingerbread is very strong. It's a Christmas album, though. It's nothing all that special. I have it at three stars. I think uh, it's decent. Okay, so you did your uh, bottom three? Okay, my bottom number 13 is Head from 1968. Controversial opinion, um, but hear me out. I'm kidding. Of course, it's not Head. It's Pool It. Pool It! Their 10th album from 1987. Uh, it's their first reunion album, and Michael Nesmith set this one out. Arguably the most essential monkey, uh, as far as being a musician in the studio anyway. And uh, they could really have used him. Uh, Pool It has a very 80s production, but not in a good way. So much of this is light, limp, and rinky-dink. Um, there's a handful of okay songs, though. Peter Torf's Getting It has a decent groove. Midnight is kind of seductive. And She's Moving In with Rico has a nice Caribbean flavor. I like the percussion on that one, at least. Uh, then you have Don't Bring Me Down, which has some good guitar, but nothing that could save the song. Uh, the sappy Davy Jones ballads aren't much of a turn on either. Uh, despite having four songs that I would called decent and one pretty good uh the bad songs here especially i'd go the whole wide world long way home and the rinky dink since you went away dragged the rating down to 1.5 stars pretty bad and that's kind of the main issue that i have have with you know, why, why i'm not really a big monkeys fan they're they're a little bit rinky dink but uh, obviously, they get a whole lot better. Uh, my number 12 is Changes from 1970. The last album from their original original run. Amazingly, their ninth album in five years. Changes finds the band reduced to just Mickey Dolans and Davy Jones. They were running out of steam at this point, And the album was largely made just to fulfill the recording contract. Um, gone was the immense popularity they enjoyed just a few years before um, they come across as maybe a little more adult on this album their commons are a little more overt uh, several songs on the album are rather limp depending on your point of view for example the second song Ticket on a Ferry Ride is it limp or just laid back I'm going with limp uh, there are a few gems of note. Do You Feel It Too has a great easygoing 60s propulsion to it, and the lyrics are great. And I Love You Better is excellent with a surprisingly funky beat. Uh, just a side note, I do like Davy Jones' personality, which I think comes across in his singing. I guess most people would say Mickey Dolenz is a better singer. But I think it's just a matter of personal preference because I think they can both sing very well. Also of note, we have 99 Pounds, uh, the song that closes out the first side and was recorded in early 67 with musical director Don Kirshner right before he was pushed off of the headquarters project. It's a good song, merely good, but good. And I never thought it Peculiar was left over from the more of the monkey sessions, and that one is also good. But for every decent or better track, there's one that's light and cheesy. 
for this reason, I'm going with 2.5 stars, meh. Number 11, I've got Instant Replay from 1969, their seventh album. The band had fallen well out of favor with the record buying public by this point, and they were trying to recapture their popularity. Peter Tork was gone. I think there's some good songs here, and one great one, which is the last track, Shorty Blackwell, written and sung by Mickey Dolenz. This album overall has better songs than changes, and the lows are less frequent and less low. The songs that Michael Nesmith wrote and sang are not among his best. Opening track through The Looking Glass is decent, while second track Don't Listen to Linda is far too light and la-di-da for my tastes. Of particular note is You and I, which features a young Neil Young on guitar and he slays. Teardrop City is very, very good from 1966. It was originally intended to be their first single, but was shelved, and it stayed on the shelf till this album. Also, A Man Without a Dream, written by Jerry Goffin and Carol King, sung by Davy Jones, is very good. Overall, though, this album has none of their best songs and a few that drag it down, so I meant three stars. Decent. Okay. Um, my bottom three might be kind of a standard one, but I'm not sure. Uh, my bottom one is Poulet. Um, it's just bad. Like, I don't really like it. I, I'm going to go two stars on it because it doesn't offend me. It just goes in one ear and out the other. Um, I think Since You Went Away is all right. Getting In's all right. A lot of the other songs are just bad. So not one I like to re-listen to. Um, and then moving on, my number 12 is the Christmas Party album. Um, this one, I would probably go up to two and a half for. I think it's moderately better. I just think there's a lot of filler. My favorite song is the Davy Jones version of Meli Kalikimaka. I think it has a nice sound to it. They took that one out of the vaults from the 90s. So it's um it's an old one, but it still sounds good. Uh and I agree that the auto-tune on Angels We've Heard on High is just way too bad. But I mean, there's only so much you can really do at that point when you think like Peter Tork was like two months away from dying of throat cancer. So it's like, I can't hold that against the album too much. Uh, but overall, eh, it's fine. Like two and a half. I don't, I just don't care that much. Um, and then my number 11 is just us, uh, which I'm going to, I'm going to be nice. I'll, I'll do three for now. Um, and my favorite song on this one is It's Not Too Late. I think that's a really pretty one. Um, I like You and I, although there was one done in the 70s by Mickey and Davey that I think was better. Um, Circle Sky is a great song, no matter who does it, but I think it was better when it was the original uh, back during the head. So yeah, that's my number 11, three stars. Okay. Um, nothing I really disagree that much with Aiden Rich, some some questionable ones, but uh, we'll get there. Um, I'm about to have a little bit of a questionable streak on my own. Um, I'm just doing my number 10 now, and it's the debut, The Monkees. Um, I think this is a really solid debut from front to back. Um, it's not necessarily as interesting or as unique as what would later come in their career for me, however. Um, just being sort of your standard 60s pop romp, it's pretty good. But on these first two, you can kind of tell that they're way more manufactured, I get. Which I know some people don't necessarily hold against them. I, I try to hold it again. I try not to, but they kind of just, I feel that they're less connected to this material in comparison to their later works, which just sort of pulls me away from it. Uh, the theme song's really good and catchy, and I Want to Be Free is also incredibly good. Uh, Papa Jean's Blues I quite liked, and Last Train to Parksville is fantastic, and I really loved I'll Be True to You. Uh, Sweet Young Thing, however, I think sounds a little bit muddy to me, but the song itself isn't bad. 
And I really hate Gonna Buy Me a Dog, uh, just incredibly obnoxious. I don't hate Davy Jones at all, but like this is him at his absolute lowest for me. Uh, just some terrible lyrics on that one. Overall, though, I think it's a really well-made, put-together pop record. But like many others, it has a couple of duds that knock it down for me. I have it at three and a half stars. I think it's a good album. Okay, my number 10 is Justice from 1996. Their 11th album. Justice is the second Monkeys reunion album. This one released nine years after the last one. Pool it, pool it. I have kind of a soft spot for it because all four Monkeys are back together and they finally made an album with only them singing and playing all the instruments. Uh, that's the title. Just Us, Justice. Um, surprisingly, it's also their heaviest sounding album, at times anyway. Mickey Dolenz wrote and sang five of the songs, and he also wrote You and I, sung by Jones. The first track revives Circle Sky from Head. To me, it sounds exactly the same, um, to the point why, where I wonder if it actually is the same recording. I don't know if I got a weird copy that um, <clears throat> substituted the old track for a newer one or what, but it sounds the same to me. Um, uh, and the fact that they would even use it suggests a dearth of ideas, but Never Enough has, is a good slow rocker. Um, Unlucky Stars is a decent 50s style rocker. I like the heavy sound of the Nesmith pinned Admiral Mike. Unfortunately, though, it's not a very good song. Uh, one of the best songs is Dying of a Broken Heart, written and sung by Dolans, with some good guitar work by Nesmith. Other outstanding track is I Believe in You, written and sung by Peter Tork. It's got a cool synth solo played by Tork. And then It's Not Too Late, penned and sung by Davy Jones, closes out the album with the grand finale. Overall, this one is kind of mid. There's nothing essential here. Uh, Instant Replay had a few songs that are better than anything on Justice, but it also had lower and more frequent lows. So Justice comes out on top. Still three stars, though. Yeah, um, my number 10, this one this one might be controversial, I don't know. My number 10 is going to be Good Times, their reunion album. And the reason I have it here is I think it's very good. Um, however, for me, it's just, it's not as good as their heyday of the 60s era. So it brings it down a bit. I like a lot of the songs, though. I like Good Times love to love um me and magdalena she makes me laugh there's a ton of great songs on it um but just compared to their heyday i don't think it's as consistently on the money i'd probably go three and a half on this one it's still good but you know i i like the original nine more than any of the ones afterwards so that's where it lands yeah fair enough um, that's not too much higher for me. That's my number nine as well. Um, I just think it's a really good collection of tracks. Um, it's their final record technically to feature any originals by the group. Like there were songs written by other people and performed originally by the band on Christmas Party, but it's Christmas Party, so who cares? But uh, generally speaking, the songs here are pretty solid. Uh, the main highlights come in the string of You Bring the Summer to Me and Magdalena. Um, I feel bad knocking it because, you know, dead for four years but i don't really like the davy song here that much and to me i just wish mickey sort of sang this whole record uh, for me his voice clearly aged the best and i just think if he was singing all of these songs it'd be a much more consistent record it still has a bunch of really high highs but a couple of lower lows i have it at three and a half as well it's a good album Okay, my number nine is The Monkees, the debut from 1966. I think The Monkees is a, respect, a respectable American answer to The Beatles. Of course, they aren't on the same level as The Beatles or The Beach Boys, 
but they were on the cutting edge of modern rock music, among the first to get a little psychedelic and even a little Middle Eastern. The first song is the TV show theme song, and that one is just etched in my brain from childhood. Uh, I have a real nostalgic appreciation for it. Uh, the second track, Saturday's Child, gets a bit heavy, but it's just an okay song in my book. Um, the outstanding song on the album is Tomorrow's Gonna Be Another Day, a blues-based rocker sung by Mickey Dolenz. I give it four stars. It's the only one that gets that high. I do dig Last Train to Clarksville, but it's merely good in my book. Uh, the verses are a little bit nagging to me. Uh, this is a pretty mid album, but none of the tracks are less than decent and most are good. So I've got this one at 3.5 stars. Might be a little generous because my average came out to less than that. Um, I was right between 3.25 stars and 3.5 stars. <clears throat> but I bumped it up to 3.5 due to its cultural significance since I was on the fence. I think that's a reasonable thing to give an album credit for. It was a huge hit. Yeah. Um, my number nine is an album neither of you have talked about yet. It is More of the Monkeys. Um, it, I think my problem with this one is I just find the songwriting and production style a bit uneven. If you compare this one to the debut, that one was mostly all written by Tommy Boyce and Bobby Hart. There were only four producers on it, and it was all recorded in L.A. This one, there are nine credited producers, over a dozen songwriters, and some of the songs were recorded in New York, some of them in Los Angeles. So it's it's very fragmented in terms of the production. I think that kind of comes through. Like, I think there are a lot of kind of jarring tonal shifts in the album that feel weird, but there are still some very strong highlights my favorite song on this one is Sometime in the Morning, which is a Goff and King ballad. I think it's really pretty. Um, and it and they used it really well in the show. Um, that was a very good episode where they had that as like a big showcase. Um, but yeah, otherwise, it's very good. You know, like these are kind of minor nitpicks that I may be blowing up just because I'm trying to make it sound like why I put it only at number nine, but I still give it like four stars. I think it's it's something I could pop on many times and be happy with what I heard. So number nine, more of the monkeys, four stars. Yeah, hard to complain about that one. It's short, sweet, it's to the point, and it's my number eight. Um, overall, a lot of what I said about the debut record sort of follows through to this one. It's a really solid collection of sort of pop tracks. However, I think that the highs and writing on this one often exceed the self-titled, in my opinion. Uh, she, when love comes knocking in, hold on, girl, your auntie Griselda, I'm not your stepping stone sometime in the morning. And I'm a believer all being on par, if not better than anything on the debut to me. And I'd say in contrast with the debut, this one doesn't have a song that I outwardly dislike. And the ones that I'm kind of more middling on aren't necessarily as low as the ones I am on the debut. Although I would say this record doesn't have as high of highs as good times for me. Despite that, though, I still have it at uh, three and a half stars. It's a pretty good record overall and not much to complain about, in my opinion. All right. My number eight is Christmas Party from 2018. Their 13th most recent and probably last studio album. Uh, I like it considerably more than you guys. Uh, I found it to be a pleasant surprise. I'm not a big uh, Christmas album guy, but I did grow up listening to Christmas music, so I do think I'm somewhat of an expert on the subject. There's a few classic standards here mixed in with a lot of offbeat choices that make the album distinctive and interesting. On the opening cut, Andrew, Andy Partridge is back after contributing a song to the previous album, Good Times with another one called Unwrap You at Christmas. It has sleigh bells and sounds appropriately Christmassy. I think it's perfect for the monkeys. Rivers Cuomo is also back with the second track, What Would Santa Do? 
which is rocking and also very Christmassy, but unfortunately pretty cheesy as well. But, you know, that, that really goes with the territory for Christmas music. Christmas music is tends to be kind of cheesy anyway. Um, and just about everything else here is pretty great. I rate four of these songs five stars, especially House of Broken Gingerbread, co-written by producer Adam Schlesinger. That one is a really great tune, kind of a heavy rocker, actually. Uh, also of note are the two posthumous contributions from Davy Jones, an excellent reading of the classic Sleigh Bells, and a very bouncy and jaunty take on the old Hawaiian-flavored song called Mele Kalikima, is that how you say it? From the 40s. I think Bing Crosby did it. Uh, surprisingly, they covered Jesus Christ by Big Star, and it is very, very good. Excellent vocal from Mickey Dolan's. Mike Nesmith's cover of the jazz standard Snowfall is Sleepy and Dreamy. I actually think this is a wonderful album. And I even played it for my family on Christmas, you know, just for the sake of getting away from all the standard stuff that I've heard so many times. And it was a nice change up. My mom liked it. The only track I would skip is the Rivers Cuomo track. Everything else I think is well worth hearing. And I'm up to four stars. You're really going to do my boy like that. My boy Rivers. <laughs> I mean, I think it's fair, you know. Yeah, fair um, enough. If it my, made Mother Wada happy, that's good. <laughs> my number eight is going to be uh, Changes. Um, I think this is an underappreciated album. I know people who have it at like two and a half stars, which I think is too low. Um, for me, this is like a four star album. Obviously, Mike isn't here, which is sad, but I think they they went into the vaults and pulled out some of the old tracks. I think, ironically, some of the best ones on the album. 99 Pounds is a headquarters outtake from before they started playing their own instruments for those sessions. Uh, I never thought of Peculiars from More of the Monkeys uh, from those sessions. I think both of those are really solid. Of the new tracks... Oh My My and I Love You Better. That's a pretty good double-sided single. They put it on this one. I think it sounds great. Uh, and there's some other good ones. I like You're So Good To Me. I like Do You Feel It Too. Uh, but yeah, just overall, there's like, it's missing like a standout track, like a like a 10 out of, like an 11 out of 10 song. There are 10 out of 10 songs on here, but I want like, it's missing like an undisputable classic to rise it above. But I, I'm gonna go four stars. My number eight changes. Fair enough. I know people that have the two and a half in at number one. So uh, with that being said, uh, moving up from there, I'm not talking about that one yet. So uh, keep that in mind. Uh, next up, I have Instant Replay. Um, another pretty strong batch of material from them. Uh, from what I've gathered though, this kind of work, it was a bit of a collection of earlier material they had before Torque had left the group. And uh, generally speaking, there's some really great stuff across the record. Uh, Don't Listen to Linda and While I Cry being obvious standouts. And I really liked uh, Shorty Blackwell as well. Um, Yeah, I don't have a ton really to comment on this one. It's just a really solid batch of material, but you can it, it kind of doesn't have that spark that some of their other records have. And I know it's kind of a cop out to say something like that, but shoot me. Uh, four stars, low four stars. It's really good. I've got the Monkees Present from 1969, their eighth album. Uh, this is the Monkees way past their heyday, and everyone is still going their separate ways, which they started doing around the time of the Birds, the Bees, and the Monkees. Like the previous album, Instant Replay, Peter Tork is gone. Before he left, there was an idea to, to devote each side of a double album to a monkey, but Peter's departure screwed up the math, so they abandoned that idea. <clears throat> it's still very much a collection of individual contributions, though. 
this album turns out to be a big step up from previous album Instant Replay, which was a bit of a letdown. I've got five songs here that I rate five stars, starting with the opening track, Little Girl, sung by Mickey Dolenz. It's got a great Flight of the Bumblebee style guitar played by veteran session musician Louis Shelton. Just ripping. The second track, Good Clean Fun, is five stars too. A country song penned and sung by Mike Nesmith with some great banjo played by Bobby Thompson, a well-known session musician. Nesmith also wrote and sang Never Tell the Woman Yes, a vaudeville number, and Listen to the Band, which is a pretty great number with steel guitar and horns. Mommy and Daddy is a good song written and sung by Mickey Dolenz. It's a protest song of sorts, protesting in particular the treatment of Native Americans, and the original lyrics had to be modified as they were deemed too confrontational. It has a Hollywood approximation of what Native American music sounds like. It starts off kind of annoying, but then it gets really good. The penultimate track is a five-star song called Oklahoma Backroom Dancer, sung by Mike Nesmith, and it's got some great honky-tonk piano on that one. The last track, Pillow Time, sounds like an old jazz standard with lyrics that name check old nursery rhymes. It's the perfect closer for the album. The only track I don't like is Ladies and Society, sung by Davy Jones, which is a la-di-da vaudeville number. I'm not a big vaudeville guy anyway. And uh, the Davy Jones pinned and sung If I Knew is too sappy for my tastes. Overall, though, this is a very good record, four stars. Yeah. Um... My number seven is going to be the debut, The Monkees. Um, I think this one does a lot of things very well. It sets up the whole kind of Monkees thing. You know, it's, it's where it all begins. I, the theme song's obviously very classic. I, you know, can't even hear it without thinking of all the episodes and stuff like that. Uh, I, I like Saturday's Child. I think it has that heavy sound that I like. There's some cool like triplet drum fills in it. Uh, Sweet Young Thing, I think, is really good. It has like a Cajun bayou sound that's nice. Um, Tomorrow's Gonna Be Another Day is a nice bluesy one. I like that one. And I like Gonna Buy Me a Dog. I don't know. Like, I think it's fun and it it has a it's just entertaining like i don't i don't know why i hate but okay i'm going four stars though the monkeys well i'm not allowed to have fun that's the main reason why uh, i i feel like it would have worked better on the show i feel like just as a closer to your first album just seems a little little childish if you will i don't know it is what it is it works for what it is uh, moving on though, my number six and my top and my top half of records. I'm going with changes. Uh, this one really took me by surprise. Uh, at this point, the group was down to just Mickey and Davey, as uh, Rich and Aiden mentioned prior, but it didn't seem to deter them from making some of the most infectious songs within their canon, in my opinion. I, I really love the sound of this record. It's just really tight. All the instruments sound really just excellent. It almost seems sort of prototypical of glam that would happen at certain points later in the decade. I picked up on. But yeah, I just really love the sound of it. The opener, Oh My My, and You're So Good to Me are both really good. Aka Polko's Son is excellent. Uh, same with Why Do You Feel It Too. Uh, there are a couple of weaker songs, though. I didn't love All Alone in the Dark and 99 Pounds. But uh, as it stands, it's a really strong pop record. Uh, the main issue, like you've mentioned, it just doesn't have any of the band's absolute highest marks. It has good songs, and generally speaking, all throughout, it's an enjoyable record, but it just lacks, like, the true highlights that the band would give you on other records, though. Still four stars for me, though. I think it's really good. All right, cool. And uh, I did mention Gonna Buy Me a Dog. I actually like that one. Uh, it's goofy, but fun. So 
All right, my number six is Good Times from 2016. Good Times with an exclamation point. Their 12th album. Uh, I think this is a shockingly good late period album by the Monkees, coming 20 years after their previous album. Davy Jones had passed away, but he does have one posthumous lead vocal, the song Little Girl, which is very good. There are several songs, in fact, that were salvaged from their 60s days. There's a lot of fairly big name songwriting contributors to this one. There's a lot to say about it, so I'll just mention a few of the songs. The opener, Good Times, is the weakest on the album, but it's still pretty good. It was written by Harry Nilsson, who joins Mickey Dolans on vocals. Initially recorded in 68, the recording was augmented in 2016 for this album. The second track, You Bring the Summer, was written by Andy Partridge of XTC fame. It's a good song that fits the monkeys well. There's some cool psychedelic, psychedelic touches here and there, including some backwards guitar at the end of the track. The third song was written by Rivers Cuomo of Weezer's fame. Like the Andy Partridge song, it is good, but merely good, not great. The fourth track, though, is very, very good, almost excellent, called Our Own World. It is a bouncy, melodic, 60s-ish tune that manages not to sound too sing-songy, written and produced written by producer Adam Schlesinger and sung by Mickey Dolans. Elsewhere, Mike Nesmith and Dolans sing the exquisite Me and Magdalena, written by Ben Gibbard of Death Cab for Cutie fame. This is a five-star song, as is the following, Whatever's Right, written by the classic songwriting duo of Tommy Boyce and Bobby Hart. Whatever's Right was from the 60s, but the original recording was lost, so they had to remake it from scratch in 2016. Uh, but the song which gets my vote for best on the album is Birth of an Accidental Hipster, written by Noel Gallagher and Paul Weller. It's a multi-part song with a great 60s-style piano interlude sung by Nez Nesmith uh, with Dolan's. Overall, I was delighted with the high quality of this album, especially this late in the game. I'm up to 4.25 stars. I'm just going to pop in here real quick because I have a, I have a question for Mr. Aiden down there. Uh, is yes. me and Magdalena Ben Gibbard's peak as an artist? By far. That's what I figured. Not even close. Not even close, yeah. Um, so my top six, I just have their third through eighth album all in a row, but not in, exactly in that order, but those are the albums remaining in my top six. So my number six is going to be Instant Replay. Half of this is new stuff. Half of this is old stuff. Both the old and the new are kind of hit or miss. Um, but I think it hits a lot more than it misses. I really like I Won't Be the Same Without Her, Me Without You, uh, You and I, and um, Shorty Blackwell's a really great closer. Um, so just overall, there's a lot of good stuff on this one. A Man Without a Dream also just dawned on me that three out of the 12 songs have without in the title. I don't know. Uh, but they're all three good, so um, I don't really have that many complaints. I think if there's one problem, it's that Mike only has three songs. Most of the albums give him four. I wish he had one more. Uh, it means Davey gets an extra song. I'd rather have a Mike song than a Davey song, but I'm still going to give it four stars. Yeah, I think everybody would rather have a Mike song than a Davey song. I mean, I like Davey, but I feel like he's pretty clearly the least talented of the four, in my opinion. Like, like he's good, but I mean, Torque's doing all this instrumental work, and then you got Dolan's, who's, in my opinion, the best singer. Then you have Mike, who's the best writer. Uh, Davey's the cool uh, British dude, so that's what you need him for. Uh, number five for me, I got Present. Uh, for whatever reason, when I first listened to this record, it just 
didn't click with me for whatever reason, but on my re-listen, it dramatically shot up my list. And um, I meant to re-listen to this before we started, but we started a little bit early, so oh well. But uh, this was their first record of fully new material since uh, Torque's departure, and it's an incredibly strong batch. Uh, Nesmith is full on country rock by this point, and this song's just absolutely amazing. I think listening to the band is incredible, and I really like Oklahoma Backward Dancer. Despite that, Dolan's isn't even a slight bit of a slouch because I think of the song Little Girl is absolutely incredible, one of his best songs in general. And even Davey's really good across this record, his highlight being Looking for the Good Times. Across the board, it's just an incredibly strong record that I incredibly underrated my first time through. Um, it's at a really high four. This and my next one are kind of on the border of four and a half, but as for now, I have them at four with sort of slight things knocking them down. All right. So my number five is The Birds, The Bees, and The Monkeys from 1968, their fifth album. This is where the monkeys first went their separate ways, working on their own individual songs in the studio. They ditched Chip Douglas, who produced their previous two albums. The monkeys are credited as producers, but they had a lot of help in the studio. Still, they were pretty much calling the shots by this point. The album is actually very well produced with some nice orchestration. Uh, it's pretty fairly cohesive, too, I think, all things considered. This is the album that contains the number one hit, Daydream Believer. Uh, spoiler alert, that gets my vote for best monkey song ever. Uh here they achieve Beatles level goodness without sounding like the Beatles. Auntie's Municipal Court is a nice laid back rocker with a trippy ending, practically a monkey's calling card by this point. Also of note is the excellent Writing Wrongs, written and sung by Michael Nesmith, featuring an extended jam, which is a rarity on a monkey's album. I'll Be Back on My Feet, sung by Mickey Dolans, is one of those tracks that is too la-di-da, too light, too jaunty for my tastes. But at the beginning of the track, it has the donkey and heat noise. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about. It's like, <laughs> it's, it's, uh, I don't know what makes that noise. I don't know where it comes from. Uh, but this is the earliest recording that I know of it. I used to hear that in uh, old uh, hip hop songs, but really weird. The donkey and heat noise really uh, caught my ear there. Uh, the last song I'll mention is the other single Valerie, which is also a five star song features a very talented studio musician on guitar some effective horns and a great vocal from Davy Jones. Uh, so this is a very strong album. I've got six songs that I consider excellent and only a couple I would call pretty good, including the opener dream world. And I think it does hit hurt the album a little bit by starting off with one of their weaker tracks, but overall, this is a very, very good album. Almost excellent. I'm still at 4.25 stars. All right. Um, yeah, I know I know what you mean about the donkey and heat noise. Uh, there, There is one song from 1968 I also know um, to Claudia on Thursday by the Millennium. It kind of has a noise like that at the beginning. That might also be one of the first ones. But my number five is going to be The Monkeys Present. Um, I think this is a really strong one. I think this is the only album where they absolutely selected the right singles. You got Listen to the Band and Good Clean Fun, both of which were the perfect choices. Uh, I think Mike does a great job on those. Um, and I really like, this is one of their most self-contained albums. It has seven original tracks by one of the members uh sometimes with a co-writer but you know with them as a writer which is the most besides headquarters and of course justice with all of them but this one is one of the more self-contained ones i really like that about it 
and it's just a great sound. It, it has very diverse um, styles and influences. There's 11 out of 12 of these songs feature only one monkey at all. So it's very much, they're each doing their own thing under the monkeys band, but they're kind of bringing it together. I really like that. It, it, it is very reminiscent of the White Album. A lot of these late period monkeys like the birds and the bees and present where they all make their own tracks and then pull them together. I think it works pretty well on here, better than on Instant Replay. I'm going four and a half on this. It's a pretty high four and a half. So, yeah. Nice. I think that's the first time that any of us have actually agreed on a placement. So that that's pretty cool. Um, number four, I got, I got a feeling this is probably Rich's number one. And I'm pretty sure it's Aiden's number two. I'm going with Head. Uh, this record is just really fucking weird. Um, it's made for a soundtrack, but uh, all the songs were made by the monkeys. So uh, fair game. I'm probably going to break that in the future, just so you know. But anyways, it has a structure where uh, half of these are just really classic monkeys pop songs, while the rest are these really weird, small little interludes. Um, I, I'm guessing it kind of plays into the story of the film. I don't know. I didn't watch it, so that's my thing. I don't watch movies. Uh, Aiden does. Subscribe to the Deep Focus podcast on YouTube. With that being said, um, like I keep saying, they just continue to grow and evolve from album to album. Uh, Porpoise Song is excellent. Circle Sky is really good. Can You Dig It? Probably Torque's best song. Uh, As We Go Along is really good. And Daddy's Song, they're all just really great pop songs. But the interludes, man, they're just so fucking weird. Uh, the actual music to them are really good. And I do genuinely enjoy them. And I think that they work well into the concept of the record. And it's hard to really describe it. I had this at my number one when I initially made the list. And it kind of went down on future listening because I just kind of wish it was an EP with like the great pop songs. And the interludes could have just stayed in the movie. But uh, generally speaking, it's really unique and really interesting, especially within their catalog. You aren't going to get anything like this pretty much ever. So that's cool, I guess. Uh, high four stars for me. I think it's really good. But the, that's my last four stars going up for me. All right. Very cool. So my number four is More of the Monkeys from 1967, their second album. I think this album is a considerable considerable leap forward from the debut. It's got five five-star songs and one 4.5. Uh, the debut had none. It does have the worst song on either of those albums, though. Your Auntie Griselda with Not So Great Singing by Peter Tork. Although I do love the scat singing at the end. But it's got one of their best and most famous songs in I'm a Believer. I love that simple yet effective organ part. It's super catchy with some great guitars. Uh, not far behind it is I'm Not Your Stepping Stone. The Kind of Girl I Could Love is another five-star song sung by Mike Nesmith, who also has co-writing credits. Uh, there's some killer drums on that one, played by the session great Hal Blaine. The Day We Fall in Love is a bit sappy for my taste, but Sometime in the Morning, sung by Mickey Dolans, is excellent. Sometimes Mickey sounds like a woman to me, and particularly on that song. Uh, Mary Mary only gets 3.25 stars from me. It sounds like the kind of song that rocks the first time you hear it, and then it slowly turns to shit on subsequent listens. In other words, it can grow tiresome easily. That was my experience anyway. You know, when I when I listened to um, albums for these rankings, I just listened to the whole thing once or twice straight through, and then I go to each song and listen to them over and over till I know exactly how I feel about them and can give them a rating. And uh, Mary Mary just got worse every time I heard it. Um, anyway, the Neil Diamond song, Look Out, Here Comes Tomorrow, is well sung by Davy Jones. And Laugh has a cool 60s swagger. Both are excellent. 
I've got this album, once again, almost at excellent, but not quite. It's another 4.25 stars. Just to bug in again, I, I hear people don't like your Auntie Griselda. I, I actually like that one. I don't get the issue with that song. I like the backing track. Um, but... that, that, that's what I think is fun. That That's when they get that sort of jaunty sort of goofiness that I enjoy. I mean, I, I'd rather listen to Gonna Buy Me a Dog, personally. but I'd rather know. buy a dog. Okay, I just so don't think at... the singing is that great. On it. Yeah, it's like joke singing. Yeah, like, I mean, it's, yeah. it's not. It's not at all. It's pretty bad. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, top four we're at. Uh, my number uh, four is The Birds, The Bees, and The Monkeys, which is a very strong album. I think one of their strongest collections of songs. However, I think the sequencing is a little weird. Like, I don't know why it opens with Dream World. To me, that's like a side closer or something. However, all of the sound is very good. This is the beginning of like them very much going their separate ways. The only song on this album with all four is Daydream Believer, which was an outtake from Pisces anyway. Um, and then it's just, it's very, it's very strong. Daydream Believer, I agree with Rich. It's an amazing song. I don't know if it would make my number one, but it definitely be a contender. Um, and all of Nesmith's, the four songs he writes are very good. Um, Magnolia Sims is one I like a lot. It has a very pretty melody. Valerie's an excellent pop song. Zoran Zam has really cool anti-war lyrics and like that March drum beat that sounds very nice to me. Um, and I really like the poster dream world we were made for each other these kind of cheesy davy jones ballads i just they sound fun you know i can't hate on them so overall I, I you know i can give it like a shaky five why not you know it's it's an album that has made me enjoy listening to it so many times i don't know why i would give it any last five stars yeah i love a good uh shaky five that being said, though, my number three, I'm going with uh, Pisces, Aquarius, Capricorn, and Jones Limited. Probably the traditional number one, but uh, people are traditionally wrong. So this is another improvement on what was already a very good record headquarters, except it isn't because I wrote that back in like July. So, oh, well, uh, they're adding a lot more instrumentation and a bit of psychedelia to their sound overall. And the writing is a lot tighter and just more interesting in comparison to the first two. Not to headquarters, like I said, I wrote half of this in like July. So, best songs here without any doubt would be some of the best that the band would make. Uh, Love is Only Sleeping, Words, and Hard to Believe would be among my favorite songs of the decade. The band had many of those. Um, yeah, it's hard to really say what makes this record work as well as it is. It's just an incredibly strong set of songs, but there's a couple that I'm less high on, but uh, everything comes together with Star Collector just an incredibly interesting and just compelling song heavily utilizing a moog synthesizer very early into the instrument it's a lineage in music it's just incredibly enjoyable and incredibly interesting at many points it's a great set of songs it's a low four and a half stars for me i think it's great but they definitely have two records that i think are greater all right cool okay my number three is head for real this time, from 1968, their lone soundtrack album and sixth studio album overall. To get a handle on this one, I saw the movie, which I quite enjoyed. Uh, you can see the whole thing for free on YouTube. Uh, it was mostly just a bunch of hippie craziness, little disjointed vignettes interspersed with songs. Uh, it's definitely the kind of movie made for stoners. The album mixes in dialogue and other stuff from the movie with six monkey songs that are all quite strong. Porpoise song is supremely dreamy. Makes me think of Sid Barrett for some reason. It's brilliant. Circle song is a good rocker. I particularly like Daddy's Song, a vaudeville-style number sung by Davey, written by Nilsson. 
I really appreciate this album more having seen the movie, and I think it's a great souvenir for it. I can appreciate the in-between bits much more now, whereas some of the dialogue I previously found kind of annoying. But I really appreciate the weird sound collage that opens the album and the other sound collages throughout. I used to make sound collages myself on tape for fun. I don't take away points because it only has six monkey songs. I just don't rate music that way. You know, EPs and singles can be five stars. But having fewer songs can affect the ranking. Um, I do have a soft spot for this project, which is why I'm going all the way up to 4.5 stars. Perhaps a little too generous. I'm not sure how much replay value it has considering the in-between bits. But for now, I love it. I think it's got that 60s magic. Yeah, I think I think watching the movie is a very strange experience. I saw it for the first time when I was, I think, eight, which is a very weird thing for, for an eight-year-old to watch. But I was a big Monkees fan, so I thought I'd like it. Um, I guess, kind of. I don't know. My number three is Headquarters, um, which the first self-contained monkeys album where they play their own instruments and stuff so uh so yeah so i i really like this one i think i think even the interludes like zilch and band six are fun i think nesmith has three great pop songs on here with you told me uh the girl i knew somewhere and you just may be the one although i wish they had also put the girl i knew somewhere on here i think that would have been an excellent choice as well um and yeah it's just there's and there's great songs from mickey he does randy scouse get um there's no time which was written by all four monkeys um there's for pete's sake which became the closing theme to their show written by peter and another guy i don't remember his name but <laughs> i really enjoyed that one it has a very much like a hippie ethos to it. And this album very much encapsulated that summer of love time. Came out the same week as Sgt. Pepper. The first week it actually uh, was number one. And then every week after that, it dropped to number two. So it had like long legs during the counterculture summer of love days. So that counts for it too. I'm going to go five stars. It's a really strong album. And I think there's, there's just two I like more. That's the only real reason there are, this isn't number one, you know, so five stars. Nice. Yeah, totally fair. If you know me, you know, my distaste for the sixties, but you know, my love of 1968. So uh, my number two is headquarters um it's got a lot the cow of the bag for january this, this record's better than sergeant pepper's just gonna say it but uh anyways <laughs> i got some attention right there anyways this is a pretty evident evolution from the first two monkeys albums um important to note this is the first one where they had sort of full primary creative control and it's very noticeable it has a lot less just sort of direct 60s pop flavor i feel it's nothing crazy. There's still a pop pan at the end of the day, but there is like a notable difference from the first two records for me, at least. And nine of the 14 songs are actually written by the band. And within their first true attempt, they're able to showcase some incredibly strong hooks and just really how great of musical chops they have at this point. I like pretty much every song here. Some of the best material up to this point. Songs like I'll Spend My Life With You, You May Just Be The One, Shades of Grey, For Pete's Sake, and Brandy Scouse Get. Um, unlike the first two, the more joking song Zilch, I think is really enjoyable and it's actually really interesting, weirdly, with how they're like showing all the vocals and whatnot. Really cool, in my opinion. And there's at least one song that I totally adore being Forget That Girl, which I don't remember if it's actually my number one song from this record, but it's pretty damn well up there. Overall, it's just such an evolution from the first two, and I do think that it has a ton of highlights on it. And just across the board, it's uh, really great. Four and a half stars. All right, very cool. Headquarters is also my number two uh, from 1967, their third album. 
It was their third consecutive number one album in the U.S., and it sold more than two million copies within its first couple months of release. Pretty impressive. This is where the Monkees took matters into their own hands, taking a much more active role in playing the instruments and making decisions about the music. They had a falling out with their musical director, Don Kirshner, and the Monkees won. Most of this album is excellent and there's nothing bad on it. The Monkees really proved themselves. Mike Nesmith wrote and sang three very good songs, two of them I would call great. I Can't Get Her Off My Mind is too jaunty for my taste, but it's not bad. Kicking off the second side is For Pete's Sake, written by Torque and a partner. As Aiden mentioned, can't remember his name. Uh, it's sung by Dolans. It's about hippie ideals like freedom, but I found it to be a little too heavy handed. After that, though, the second side is excellent, loaded with five star songs. It's a peculiar phenomenon for me. For most of these albums, the second side seems like they save, save their best songs for the second side. Maybe that's just me. I don't know. But Zilch is a super cool one minute vocal experiment, while No, no Time is a great little Richard, little Richard style rocker. The last two tracks are great too. Early Morning Blues and Greens, sung by Jones, is poignant, or at least something I can relate to in the lyrics. It's got a really cool organ solo. And Randy Scouse Git. It's alternately jaunty and frantic, and somehow it just works. It also makes nice use of timpani, the drums, played by Mickey Dolans, who also sang. I think the Monkees proved themselves to be very good musicians on this album, and it turned out to be excellent. 4.5 stars. Yeah, I, I think it was a big kind of like I, I do think a lot of people didn't know if like the monkeys could put together a really solid album on their own without all the help of outside producers outside songwriters outside you know players all that um and my number two and this is really hard this this will this will probably have the most songs in my top 10 um but it's head um and the main reason is every song on this is just great. The ones that are actual songs. Um, it I think it's the most solid collection of actual songs they ever did. It's just, there's not a bad one here. Um, and they work really well within the movie. Each of them has their own like music video, basically. And it's very entertaining in that. The movie's obviously crazy, but... It's it's a, an amazing collection of songs. Circle Sky sounds great. There's a live version they do in the movie. I like that one even more than the studio cut they put here. Um, Porpoise Song, really nice. There's also a single version of Porpoise Song that's about a minute longer. I like that one. Both versions are great. Um, and As We Go Along is a beautiful Carol King, uh, like folky ballad. That's awesome. Yeah, there's just... I, I can't see many lowlights here. So five stars, maybe five plus territory, you know, maybe six out of five zone. I don't know. Um, but no, it's it's something I would I really like to listen to. So yeah, head my number two. And it's only one left, you know. Yes. Um, two things. One to further dig my own grave. I just looked at my rate your music. Uh Sergeant Peppers isn't in my top ten. So uh your pitchforks out right there and uh two 1968 is fucking insane due in part to my number one the birds the bees and the monkeys uh yeah i just think that this record is really amazing um this was another growth in their already further established sound probably the closest they ever got to making a fully baroque pop record um this really has a ton of grandiosity that i think just isn't going to be matched on their other records and per the usual, I just think that the songs continue to improve again and again. The track listing, in my opinion, becomes more fine-tuned. I, I do agree Dream World is a bit of an awkward opener. 
but I don't really know what else you would open the record with. I, I think that it works, namely because I just can't think of what you would change it with. Speaking of, I think a Dream World is an incredible song. We are made for each other, Daydream Believer. And the ending stretch from I'll Be Back Up Onto My Feet to uh, Zoran Zam is really strong, with my favorite song being Valerie. Almost sort of power poppy in a way, with such an infectious chorus with the added in horns and whatnot. It's just a really an incredible showcase of what the monkeys were able to grow to as a group. It's pretty clearly my favorite record. And by the group, I think that it's their apex. I still only have it at four and a half. They don't quite get to five for me. It is a 60s band, you know, what can I do? But I, I think that they're one of the best in that regard. Really, really great stuff. Four and a half stars. All right. Um, well, I think I've held out pretty well considering I'm sick. <laughs> um, my number one, Pisces, Aquarius, Capricorn, and Jones Limited from 1967, their fourth album. This was the fourth consecutive album to reach number one on the Billboard charts. The Monkees employed more outside help than on the previous album headquarters, and I think it paid off. Pisces is especially notable for being one of the first rock records to use the Moog synthesizer two years before the Beatles did it. They put it to good use on the trippy Daily Nightly with Mickey Dolan's on the Moog and vocals. The song was written by Michael Nesmith. The last track, Star Collector, also has a Moog and a really trippy ending. Star Collector is possibly the first song ever written about groupies, and it doesn't take a kind view of them. Mike Nesmith turns in a great vocal performance on The Door Into Summer, while the jaunty, cuddly toy written by Nilsson gets more addictive with each listen, the opposite of Mary Mary. You're not the only cuddly toy who was ever enjoyed by some other boy. Uh, I don't know. It just sticks in your head. The only song I'm not too crazy about is the Davy song, Hard to Believe, which is too sappy for my tastes. That and Peter Tork's spoken word throwaway, Peter Percival Patterson's Pet Pig Porky. It's really too short to be consequential. But Count on the Monkeys to always add some zaniness to their albums, to most of them anyway. I think that's what they were largely about. But Pleasant Valley Sunday, and that's a classic. And Don't Call on Me, written and sung by Mike Nesmith, is a gorgeous breakup song. It was a close call, but Pisces comes out on top. Uh, still at 4.5 stars. Can't get to 5. That's for the Beatles. But 4.5 is excellent. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I have to say number one, but I, I'll go up to 5 on this one, as I did on the last three. <laughs> <laughs> so, Pisces, Aquarius, Capricorn, and Jones. I have it here because I think it's it's just a perfect like pop album. Almost every song, I think, is super strong they're su they're so diverse almost every song has a different sound but they're all so hooky uh salesman is a great song uh, about a drug dealer so we get a little bit of that subversive edge uh she hangs out is really fun bubblegum pop love is only sleeping uh is, uh barry man and cynthia wilde composition and i really enjoy that it's partially in seven four nice to see that kind of uh technical uh improvement in that way uh the door into summer is a really pretty song love the lyrics what am i doing hanging around they bring in the country you have psychedelia with daily nightly and star collector um yeah it's just amazing you know i think and it you know maybe some days i could see it being my number one of 67 but that year is just too stacked i mean i have the beatles and the stones immediately coming in and saying hey don't forget about us you know so it's very hard to say like but it's at the very least top five um i really like it uh, almost all these songs were on the show so i have a very kind of nostalgic feeling about all of them 
I, I would say I wish they'd gotten rid of Hard to Believe because that's the only song on the album that doesn't have the monkeys playing as studio musicians. And I wish they'd replaced it with Going Down instead of that staying a non-album B-side, which, I mean, I'm not, I, I wish it had gotten a home on an album. I think it deserves it. But otherwise, five stars, you know, minor nitpicks are not a reason to demote an album in my book. So there we go. Forgot the apex of uh, 67. Yeah. Well, maybe, maybe. 67 or 66. Uh, you flip a coin. What are you talking about? Because I think that we have uh, slightly different perceptions of the record. <laughs> Alrighty. Perhaps. Alrighty. Well, uh, before we talk about general thoughts and whatnot, let's get into some songs. Um, did top 10 and whatnot. Don't typically like doing this, but I thought it'd be interesting to sort of see who had the most of all of them spoiler alert peter didn't get any sorry pete but uh oh well songs that just missed for me are star collector p.o box 9847 and little girl number 10 for me i have porpoise song leads by mickey dolan's off of head uh, number nine she makes me laugh leads by mickey dolan's off of good times uh, number eight daydream believer leads david jones the birds the bees and the monkeys Number seven, Forget That Girl, leads David Jones off headquarters. Number six, I Want to Be Free by Davy Jones off the debut record. And number five, Me and Magdalena by Michael Smith, Nesmith from Good Times. And number four, Valerie, led by Davy Jones from, but yeah, by Davy Jones. I, this is weird. I have his name and then Michael Nesmith on this one together for some reason. Bizarre. Off uh, Birds, the Bees, and the Monkeys. Number three, I have Words by Mickey off of Pisces, Aquarius, Capricorn, Jones Limited. Number two, I have one song apparently Rich didn't like that much, Dream World. Davy Jones off the Birds, the Bees, and the Monkeys. I think it's fantastic. And number one, definitely not what I was expecting going into this. I have Shades of Grey led by Davy Jones and Peter Tork from Headquarters. All right. Very cool. Uh, I've got six honorable mentions. I'll go ahead and mention those. Uh, I'm Not Your Stepping Stone from More of the Monkeys. Zilch from Headquarters. Randy Scouse Get from Headquarters. Valerie from The Birds, The Bees, and The Monkeys. Little Girl from The Monkeys Present. And House of Broken Gingerbread from Christmas Party. My number 10 is Star Collector from Pisces. Number nine, Early Morning Blues and Greens from Headquarters. Really poignant lyrics about living alone. Number eight, Sunny Girlfriend from Headquarters. Number seven, The Door into Summer from Pisces, Aquarius, Capricorn, and Jones Limited. Number six, The Kind of Girl I Could Love from More of the Monkeys. Number five, Birth of an Accidental Hipster from Good Times. Number four, Porpoise Song from Head. Number three, Daily Nightly from Pisces. Number two, I'm a Believer from More of the Monkeys. And number one has to be Daydream Believer from The Birds, the Bees, and the Monkeys. All right. I have a lot of honorable mentions as well. There's a ton of great songs. Some of my honorable mentions that just missed it. Sometime in the morning, you told me um, I want to be free. Uh, Sunny Girlfriend, Love is Only Sleeping, Salesman, um, Can You Dig It, Dream World, The Poster. And there were some songs, there were outtakes that almost made mine but i didn't want to rank them because i don't know if you guys heard them uh time and time again which is a changes outtake war games a birds and the bees one that's really good and look down which is from present but otherwise i got top 10 here number 10 i never thought it peculiar off of changes i just think it's a really fun jaunty pop song i can't get mad listening to it number nine you just may be the one soaring bridge written by mike and it just rules i love it 
Um, Daily Nightly, number eight, very psychedelic lyrics about the Sunset Strip riots. So getting a bit more kind of political and protesty, which is cool. And my number seven, The Girl I Knew Somewhere, their first song where they all played as a self-contained band written by Mike, has a really nice harpsichord solo from Peter and some good vocals from Mickey. I guess too bad Davey doesn't really get to contribute much. I guess I, he played the tambourine, I guess. He gets that. Um, number six, I have Daddy's Song. It's a spotlight of head for me, and I think it's just a great, great part of that whole experience. Uh, number five, Listen to the Band. Last song, All Four Monkeys played live as a band before Peter left. They later put it on present. It's really great. Has Mike doing a very rocking kind of sound. Good, clean, fun. Also almost made the list, but just just missed it. But this one is really great. And, now, and then getting into number four, Circle Sky, specifically the live version. Sounds awesome. And I really like listening to it. It just, it has more kind of, protesty lyrics as uh, one's kind of anti-Vietnam and stuff like that. Um, but I just think it sounds great and you get, everyone gets a chance to shine. Mickey's got some drumming on it. Davey plays the organ on the bridge, bringing that in. And you got Mike and Peter on bass and guitar, you know, really bringing it home. And then top three time, number three, I have As We Go Along awesome b-side uh, later on head i really enjoy it it's a great song and it just has a very pretty sound i think one of mickey's best vocal performances number two the door into summer just awesome 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 mike singing this one has mickey as well and it just sounds great um very pretty melody love the lyrics and the way it all sounds and my number one can be porpoise song just because i think it's a great great song and i could listen to it anytime and yeah it's, it's really it's just a great song i think it works great in the context of head on the album and just as a standalone song to listen to it has the chimes and the organ and it's a very and all the layers of backing vocals it's a very intricate production that i really enjoy so yeah Nice. Um, as you can tell, uh, we fucking hate the monkeys. Well, boy band yeah. fucking bitches. Hate, hate, these, them. hate these nerds. Of course. Mike Nesmith who? <laughs> Alrighty. Yeah, monkeys are cool. I dig them a decent bit. For, for a 60s band, for me, they go the distance. So, I have like three fives in the whole decade. They have three four and a halves. So that's pretty good for this decade for me. They probably have an equal amount of four and a half that the Beatles do for me. So no, that's just crazy. I'm a and I'm, cookie, I'm a, I? and I'm a monkey's hardcore fan, but I even I think that's a little crazy. No, I won't deny it. it's fucking bonkers, but <laughs> they don't have anything nearly as bad as this may be a controversial opinion, but I think if the Beatles are a little bit better than the monkeys, it's like a little bit, but I'll take that's a opinion we'll we'll see how my scores line up in january how about that or whenever that episode comes out who knows yeah i've yet to start my re-listening but i'm uh i'm like 14 deep into we'll McCartney. See. so all right well yeah. done people yeah yeah that was fun nice but, talking to you guys about the one of my favorite bands so yeah probably hate them huh. all right with that being said, let's uh, get into who's coming up next. Um, fun fact, I recorded this episode yesterday, what I'm going to be talking about now, so that's fun. I'm um, bringing back Harvey from Small Faces and the Faces, and we're going to be talking about a artist that Sir Williamson Schmilliamson requested I do. Talking about the six records by Elliot Smith. Pretty well-regarded 90s indie singer-songwriter. He's pretty cool. Pretty good. Made one of those album things once or twice, so that's pretty cool. That being said, though, hope you enjoyed. Hope you listen to the Monkeys, because they're pretty much better than most bands of this era. 
that being said, though, go ahead and subscribe to the Deep Focus podcast online, as well as Aiden's own channel, Cabin Essence. If you want to stop by uh, Rich's shop if you're in the area, do that, I guess. Getting all the promotion in, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, follow me. I'm me, so that's pretty good. Uh, be sure to comment your opinions on the monkeys. I have a Discord server link in the description. I'm also going to throw in my top 40 monkey song playlist because I did a little bit of prep for this episode. So Just that being said, bit. yep. Hope you enjoy. Hope you give your opinions and hope you stay tuned for Elliot Smith coming hopefully the week later. We'll see how this works out. See ya. Bye. See ya.